So good afternoon and welcome to all of you and into this uh, introduction to systems labs and CDS. So just to give you a background, my name is Lakshmi and I am the convener for the cloud systems lab in IISE. Now cloud systems lab interestingly comes as a part of uh, the supercomputing uh, education research center of IISE. However, all my students actually come from CDS. So uh, kindly do not confuse. So you are very much part of uh, CDS as you belong to CSL and do research there. So. Uh, through this conversation, I think I would just like to give you an overall idea of what we do at uh, CSL. Um, so basically, uh, uh, what I want to inform you is uh, on the research focus and what interests uh, CSL. And uh, given that information, why should you be interested in CSL? I'll also share some exciting stories uh, about research work that happened in CSL and is currently happening. And also perhaps a clue as to if you decide to choose uh, what should be the basis for uh, the choice to join CSL. And bottom of this slide, you would see a web link which essentially gives you the details of the lab and uh, all the work that has uh, happened in the lab. OK. Uh, give me a minute, please. Sorry. Right, so CSL essentially is engaged in large scale distributed systems research. And uh, one of the key reasons why uh, we are looking at large scale distributed systems research is essentially uh, for the fact that uh, computing has become pervasive in our lives. Right, we see uh, the expansion of digital footprint across any, many, and every organization. Look at the government services, look at your healthcare sector, and look at education, right? Look at your entertainment segment, look at your mobiles, the communication. So everywhere there is an impression of the use of the digital aspect. And one of the requirements, of course, Hello. Yes, you're audible. OK, so one of the key requirements in this whole space is the necessity for compute infrastructure. And where does this compute infrastructure come from is where the distributed systems fit in. Right. And the most imposing challenge in this space today, given that we are faced with climate change, global warming, and uh, being pushed to seek answers for uh, sustainable energy aspects. So of course, that extends to your uh, digital or the compute infrastructures and green computing becoming that key relevant theme here. Uh, basically, when you are trying to map across different applications on varied architectures with the pressure to reduce idle cycles. OK, and that is where the cloud systems fit into this whole space of large scale distributed systems. Now, most cloud setups, if you see, so one of the most interesting examples that comes to your mind or even when you hit on Google about cloud computing is a, a picture of the Google's cloud data centers, right? They're huge, huge monstrous places with sprawling servers. Uh, and uh, I, I don't know how many, the last I saw was 20,000 plus, but I'm pretty sure it's much, much more than that. Now, given that uh, there are so many systems and uh, the mapping that uh, people are looking in terms of using the, those many systems comes with the property uh, that cloud computing carries. And uh, some of the most attractive features, of course, are the aspects of elastic scaling uh, associated with on-demand usage and billing, right? Now, given this paradigm, what really uh, uh, brings 
to four is what interesting aspects of research align in this space. Now, some of the important facets in this uh, landscape of large scale distributed systems is that uh, the distributed computing infrastructure essentially integrates uh, the virtualized servers, which are the compute cycles and associated with it. Uh, obviously, you're looking at solving large uh, data uh, uh, to be used for this computing. So given that we are in a data explosion age where uh, anything uh, comes out of mining from these heaps of data, storage is an essential part of this infrastructure. And to allow for this connection across so many uh, distributed uh, elements, uh, interconnection is or the network uh, which connects all these uh, distributed facets uh, or distributed elements in the infrastructure is also an essential component. Now, uh, one of the nice things that uh, these uh, the cloud uh, setups help to do is bring about a conglomeration of all these elements into something that is manageable and useful from the perspective of an application that really desires to use these various, various elements in uh, different aspects uh, of its use cases. So one application may use these elements in one way, uh, which could be very different from the uh, other set of applications. But however, you can't be establishing a setup for each of these applications. Instead, you might want to look at uh, intelligently using the existing infrastructure in different forms of use. And that's pretty much what the uh, cloud uh, associated systems research deals with. Right. So as you can uh, easily uh, uh, visualize, having so many distributed elements uh, brings in a uh, humongous management complexity. And one of the key attributes to handle this complexity is the ability to build a software that is intelligent enough to autonomously or automatically manage uh, and align the uh, different usages. And this aspect comes through the idea of middleware. Now, middleware in the in cloud context is essentially a software layer which lives above this computing infrastructure and is built with uh, capabilities or properties that can help different computing paradigms uh, for interesting application use cases. And some of the ingenious ideas which essentially culminate in the aspect of cloud computing come from the properties that this middleware is able to render. OK, so this is the basic background in terms of what we perceive from distributed systems in the cloud system lab. So let me also share some interesting stories that have happened as part of the research initiative that uh, has been taken up in the cloud systems lab. So the cloud systems lab essentially is engaged in the cloud system architecture research and its usage. And broadly, uh, we look into three aspects uh, within this space of cloud system architecture. The first one, of course, is the system aspect of the architecture. And that is uh, that which is relevant with what is called as the virtualization stack. And this virtualization stack essentially is composed of the physical elements of the resources in the cloud setup, which includes your uh, compute servers, which the storage servers or storage services, and the network fabric as well as the networking services. Okay. Now, a mix of all these to align with usability for an application is what uh, is relevant in this space. And there have been many uh, interesting uh, research problems that have been looked at in this space, which associates with almost all these three elements of the infrastructure. So few examples are listed here. More details uh, are available based on the publications that are listed at the website that I mentioned. So let me share a couple of 
interesting stories in this space. So one of the key uh, mechanisms that is used for virtualizing today in the most modern data centers that you see like Amazon or Google is based on this aspect of time sharing of resources. Okay. So essentially to just give you a simple example, I'm pretty sure most of you would have heard about the time sharing CPU scheduling algorithm. It essentially divides the CPU into uh, some uh, discrete time slices which are then allocated to processes for use. A similar idea is used in the context of the system per se, all system resources. So when I mean system, what I mean by system resources is the CPU memory uh, storage as well as the interconnect. And there is a very nice way of using this paradigm of time multiplexing to build virtual resources, which can then be allocated to an element called virtual machine over which you could actually boot like any traditional uh, system and then uh, deploy your applications in that. So the important aspect with time multiplexing is that there is this uh, management association uh, uh, necessary for managing the context that you associate with that time slice. So obviously, as you can easily understand, uh, whenever you need to change the context, the context has to be preserved. The previous context has to be preserved uh, to bring in a new context for execution. Uh, so uh, the uh, divergent paradigm in the same space is that of space multiplexing. Now space multiplexing essentially in the context of virtualization uh, could deal with the idea of partitioning the physical resources, a set of physical resources into distinct isolated sets over which you can realize a virtual machine. So one such exploration is what we were involved in and that uh, goes by the name called Visma, which is essentially a virtualization and a security uh, enabled mini core architecture SOC design so wherein this idea of space multiplexing was used. Interestingly, of course, there are a lot of trade-offs that you make when you're designing such um, stacks. So some of the key aspects that you see here is while you deliver on performance, you might lose on efficiency of usage of resources. So some of these uh, aspects do come in uh, in such explorations. Similarly, uh, another interesting story around this space is that of disaggregated GPUs where uh, in modern uh, hyperconverged cloud data centers, the biggest challenge is how to extract utilization, good utilization or efficient utilization of resources when there are a lot of applications waiting to be executed. And uh, one such thing uh, really comes up here in such space is what is called as resource stranding. So basically the idea of resource stranding actually deals with the problem that while there are idle resources, you are not able to deploy applications to use those resources. And that's commonly possible with resources like the GPUs, basically because every GPU to be used requires a host CPU to enable its usage. So um, the idea here uh, was that should we be able to uh, disaggregate or decouple this connection between a GPU and a host CPU and still make it viable for use. Okay, so this research actually won a best paper award in a conference that it was published. So that's an exciting story uh, that came out of this lab. Yet another one that we could talk about is about the hierarchical SDN controller design. Uh, this deals with the network virtualization features and uh, particularly when you look at the uh, scale at which these uh, cloud setups have to operate and the dynamic nature of the traffic that it has to be uh, managing then you definitely need an autonomicity in terms of using its uh, network resources. So in this work, actually, uh, the student had looked at integrating uh, 
the service function chain capability into the control domain of the software defined network controller architecture and then uh, evaluated in terms of how should the organization of the information and the control flow uh, or the control capability be distributed such that it is scalable and it was found that hierarchical uh, nature uh, would be a more uh, feasible and more scalable design. So this was also a very interesting piece of work which did won some accolades uh, in an industry forum where this was presented. Some stories in the ongoing research in this space deal with the idea of uh, evaluating the capability for cloud uh, core cloud services and storage services one of them uh, uh, in terms of how it can handle disruptions in the space of cloud so large scale distributed systems normally are plagued with failing components or failing sort of services so how do you essentially overcome or mitigate those failures without any disruption on service is uh, one of the features that resilience talks about and this is an ongoing work uh, by a PhD student currently in CSL. Now, the other dimension uh, that the cloud system also deals with is essentially uh, to do with uh, enabling and enhancing the cloud middleware. Now, like I said, the cloud middleware is the software intelligence that is built over these distributed uh, physical components or the logical components in the cloud setups and this middleware is the one which helps you to abstract out the paradigms of compute the properties of the cloud like elasticity or on demand provisioning and so on right so some of the key problems in this space deal with uh, a very uh, interesting algorithms uh, that deal with optimization of uh, resource usage so one of the standard problems here is the VM placement, uh, wherein we are looking at the deployment aspect of uh, uh, hosting a virtual machine over a physical server when you have large amount of applications and large number of resources. How do you classically solve this problem, taking into certain constraints like performance or availability, etc. Those are all certain properties that affect the applications and how do you essentially go about uh, developing an algorithm to deploy that, right? Similarly, one of the uh, early efforts from this lab is the autonomous elastic engine. So this is almost a decade old work and this work essentially won a gold medal in this institute for his for uh, the research the student uh, completed and uh, the idea here is of course today in the modern day clouds you have all these scalability or elastic scaling knobs that you see but at that point in time we just had one knob which said if the server's capacity is so and so then you scale your application so that was slightly indirect way of scaling wherein this uh, exploration looked at relevant metrics in an application space and also the historical demand uh, that the application was associated with and used a, a prediction algorithm to align the demand prediction with the allocation and uh, kind of demonstrated how an autonomous engine could be built first and secondly how such autonomous capabilities help you to optimize on resource usage as well as improve the efficiency of the resources in the cloud setups. Then you also had uh, other stories like uh, data center defragmentations, which is uh, an initiative that was done with Flipkart. And interestingly, this collaboration led to certain practices that Flipkart adopted on its e-commerce deployments. And uh, that similar work kind of got extended. Of course, the defragmentation data centers for Flipkart was based on the VM construct for deploying applications. Now, uh, subsequent to that, I think today we are seeing the microservice architecture. So uh, actually uh, pushing the idea of uh, optimization and efficient resource usage, the right sizing of microservices with coordinated scaling was another work that also came out of this lab. Current research in this space essentially uh, deals with resiliency in application uh, services. 
and the other aspect that we are we have just recently started with Accenture was uh, is actually uh, dealing with dynamic resource provisioning uh, using some learning methods. So this is something that is happening now. Then coming to the uh, the third dimension of the research that happens in CSL is uh, about the cloud native applications. So, so far, I think as cloud adoption picked up, there was almost a lot of retrofitting of the existing applications into this new paradigm of usage. However, as you can easily understand, the uh, the nativity of an application to a paradigm essentially uh, fetches you uh, uh, the richest dividends. So exploring that aspect, there has been some work initially that was done uh, on the real-time cloud application space uh, like that of uh, applications like your navigator, right? So the aspect of uh, uh, being responsive to the demands of navigator, navigator application events, right? So there were two perspectives that were looked at, the scheduling part and the storage organization part. And the third was, of course, the association with privacy based on location data. Then current research that is happening in this space is about, uh, is on the serverless uh, uh, deployments and the serverless paradigm of computing. And in this space, we are looking at the constructs for uh, the function as a service deployment, as well as the frameworks that actually enable function as a service uh, kind of a paradigm uh, to be enabled and used across different applications. And as you can see, uh, all uh, and many of these uh, ventures kind of uh, happened through uh, interesting collaborations with a lot of global organizations. Few of them are listed here. So our initial venture was with HP Labs, then Boeing, uh, the Visma happened uh, with the help of MIT, then Flipkart. Currently, we are looking at the hybrid cloud space in a, with a collaboration, uh, in a collaboration with IBM. And of course, uh, some aspect of resource provisioning using learning with Accenture. Now, let me come to the actual question that perhaps is uh, bothering you or perhaps is more interesting for you. Now, uh, should you consider joining CSL or what should you consider if you want to join this lab or uh, choose this lab for your research? So there, here are a few questions that I have listed, which uh, perhaps I would answer before making a selection. And uh, the first one, of course, are you interested in the way computing systems are evolving? So if you see today, supercomputers, scientific computing, enterprise computing, real-time applications, so all those kind of applications that fascinate and make your life more easy, all are about the different ways of using computing and uh, are necessarily uh, associated with a modulated way the computing systems are evolved. So does it fascinate you? Do you get intrigued by how these constructs get architected and want to really look below the layers, below the black box? in terms of understanding how essentially all this is orchestrated to bring about the usage that you fancy, right? And if so, then obviously uh, you should be, if you are interested in systems, then I would say yes, join CS. okay? So I would look forward to actually having a conversation with you, of course, after the due diligence and process that you people have to go through. So good luck. And hopefully uh, we have some interesting ideas to talk about and, and also work with. Thank you. If there are any questions, please go ahead. I will take it. Please feel free to unmute and ask a question if you have any. Hello, ma'am. Uh, yes, am I please. Audible? 
Yes. Uh, um, uh, are you working anywhere related to the security aspects of this uh, computing or any work which is going on or related to the security aspect of it? As of now, uh, nothing is active in the domain of security. I think quite some time back we did look at virtualization stack and the way it is architected to evaluate the uh, security uh, aspects with regard to the uh, distributed DDoS kind of attacks. Uh, but however, yes, we do uh, are in, we are interested in looking at the feature of resilience and dependability on the cloud computing paradigm and explore the aspect of security there. Yes, that doesn't stop us. Yes, we should be interested. Yes. Does it answer your question, uh, Prithvi? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions, please? 